I'm Responding Dispatch Center screen. The Dispatch Center screen is one that we provide to dispatch centers who dispatch for one or more agencies who are I'm Responding subscribers. Through the system, you can see who's on duty, the apparatus that are in and out of service, the members who are responding, of course, as well as the map of each of the agencies and what calls they're going to, so you can relay information about their map markers and pre-plans to them. Thank you again for watching our YouTube page and checking out this video. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to this YouTube page. There is no cost to subscribing, but when you do, you'll be alerted to each video that we release so that you can be notified when we publish new videos. Scan the QR code to the left to be taken immediately to the I'm Responding Insider playlist for all of our newest training videos. The Dispatch screen links with many of the functions of the I'm Responding program. You'll see here that there are 11 programs that the Dispatch screen directly has access to or directly links to. As an agency, you want to populate this information for your dispatch center to see what's going on and be informed in a way than other just radio communication, what's happening at your department. As a dispatch center, you want to encourage your departments who are linked to your screen. You want to encourage them so that they can populate these different features of I'm Responding. If your agency goes into an area where there is no data reception or no internet service in their trucks, you can still relay information to them through the radio because you can see it. To start off with the dispatch screen, you're going to go to the I'm Responding website and log in with the Dispatch Center administrative credentials that we've assigned to you. The purpose of the administrative credentials is one thing. When you're in the system, you're going to go to this button in the top that says Administrative. That's the only thing that you're going to do with these credentials. When you go to the Administrative button, it'll allow you to create and edit individual user logins, assigning and managing each one with its own permissions. It's up to you if you want to create an individual user login for every employee of the Dispatch Center, or create one or two generic logins that all of your employees share. Once you have a number of individual user logins, you can edit them as needed, changing the permissions. You can see the column of check marks to the right-hand side here. You can check and uncheck those boxes, granting and taking away permissions. When you do make those changes, you're going to see this little paper with a pencil to edit the profile. When you're in the edit mode, you have a check mark and an X. The check mark will save the changes you've made and the X will not save the changes you've made in case you were on the fence of something that you were doing. The garbage can to the right will of course delete the profile entirely for profiles that you no longer need. Once you've created the individual user logins, that's what will be used from this point going forward. Unless you need to add, edit, or delete individual users, you're not going to use the administrative credentials any longer. The individual user logins will be what you use for daily access to I'm Responding's dispatch screen. Same process, you're going to go to the I'm Responding website and log in. We're going to go through the buttons along the top of the screen here. These are the buttons that you're going to see when you're logged in as an individual user. You'll notice that the administrative button along the top is no longer here. The first button to the left is Select an Agency. This is where you'll select an agency that you want to see on the screen all the time. There is an automated function that we'll take a look at in a few moments where you can have agencies added as they have incidents and they'll be automatically removed when their incident times out. If there are agencies you want to see 24-7, you can add them up on the screen and they will stay there until you manually remove them. The next button that we're going to take a look at is the Preferences button. When you select the Preferences button, you'll get a pop-up in the middle of your screen with six tabs along the top. I'm not going to go into and through each one of these settings, but you'll see that under the Scheduling tab, there's a couple different questions being asked, and each question has a yes and no bubble. If you want to see the names of the members on the schedule, you click the yes. Maybe you don't care about the member's name, you just want to know if they're a chief, a firefighter, a driver, so you can see their positions and qualifications. So these are all preferences that are tied directly to your user login. If you have a personal login that is just for you, configure this however you'd like and change the settings and see what works best for you. If you're sharing a user login, a generic login, among your fellow employees, definitely don't make changes to this until you've gotten that permission from whoever may be in charge of the account. The next function we're going to take a look at is Send Messages. From the dispatch screen, you can send messages to every first responder on every roster of every agency that's linked with your system. 
You can also send messages to a specific person. So if you know that you want to reach Bob at Fire Department Station 35, you can pull that up specifically and send Bob a message from the dispatch screen. The steps to sending a message are very simple. Step one, you're going to compose your own message. Step two, you're going to choose your delivery method. We suggest checking the box that says all. Step three, you can choose your recipients. And this is where you can have the ability to send to every member on an agency rather than having to pick uh, them all individually. You can just check this box and it will check all the members of that agency. Step four, you upload any attachments if you want to. You can attach up to three files. So if you do have an Amber Alert where you want to put out or like a BOLO, some information or a photograph of what the information is, you can include that. And step five, you can send the message. You'll see that the send bubble is already filled out under step five. If you do want to save the message as a template for future use or schedule to be delivered at a later time, you can certainly do that as well. The next button we're going to take a look at on the home screen is apparatus. This is a real simple way where you can just see all the apparatus that are in service, out of service, all of them, and reports of when vehicles were taken in and out of service. If the agencies you dispatch for are diligent about doing this, your information will always be accurate. And that's something that you can encourage them to be diligent about. Adding their apparatus to the system and managing the actual status of whether they are in service and functional or out of service and disabled or unable to be utilized for an incident. The print screen button will actually capture the screen exactly as is and print it for you. So if there is an incident occurring or may, there might be a discrepancy about someone who responded or didn't respond or anything like that at all, the print screen button will grab and capture the screen exactly as it is. The reports button allows you to see the responders to a call, all of the sent notices that were out, the messages that we just took a look at. You'll be able to see the sent messages, who composed them, what the message said, who it was delivered to, and an apparatus status report. So if you want to see the apparatus that were in and out of service a week ago or a month ago or six months ago, that report would be here. The next thing we're going to take a look at is a brand new function of I'm Responding called Regional Notices. This is non-emergent information for agencies. It does not send an alert to the agency. It's just like a bulletin board, a place where you can post information for agencies to be aware of. They can display this on their I'm Responding home screen. They can also see this on the I'm Responding application. But again, this does not send alert. It's just a bulletin board where they can look if they know that there's information there for them to see. When you go into Regional Notices, you'll have a toolbar along the top that's very similar to uh, many uh, composition programs. So essentially, this would look like a big Word document. It's a white screen where you can change the font, the color of the font, the background. You can change a lot of different functions of how it looks and how it feels. You can, put, you can embed hyperlinks to take your members to places. So on their home screen, on their computer, or on their application, when they look at the non-emergent regional notice that you post, if there's a link there, they can click on the link and it will take them to where you want them to be taken to. And you can change the color of different things so that they can see the most important information maybe is highlighted in red, or it's red font highlighted in yellow. This is a place where you can put weather notices, road closures, images and videos, hospital closures, BOLO information for maybe a local law enforcement issue. I created one with road closures and hospital closures. Let's take a look and see how that appears on the screen. So on my agency account, what I see is I actually created my own grid, two columns wide, four columns high. I selected and I'm easily able to change the background highlight color. Grouse Hospital is currently on diversion. If that changes, I can just go into the regional notices function of the dispatch screen and change Krauss Hospital and diversion to being green highlight. The embedded link down below to Connick State Parkway, if my agencies or my users click on that link, they'll be taken to the Taconic State Parkway website, which will give them the most current information about any accidents or road closures on that parkway, including the mile markers and whatever other data. So that allows them to be informed by the parkway specifically and not necessarily by me, the dispatcher. The next thing we're going to take a look at is this square to the left-hand side. We have the agency name, we have timers, and we have some different buttons. So the timers that are listed here, they can auto start when the dispatch is received by the agency. There is a timer here that you can start manually to track any type of time frame that you're interested in. But a timer will be added and start automatically when an incident is received by the agency. 
You will notice that there's a pause button that you can pause a timer that's already going, a reset button where you can reset a timer that's been paused, and this third timer that you can just play and start as needed. Under the preferences, this is where you can go to the auto display tab and choose to have the agency added to the screen or removed from the screen when a certain amount of time has passed. So for example, here you can see that the agency will be added to the system when a new dispatch is received. After five minutes, the agency will be removed from the screen automatically. And you can of course change that five minute time frame. The next button we're going to take a look at is this red button that says Map View. Every agency that's on your screen will have a button that says Map View. It'll automatically pull up a map, it'll show the now responding information for that agency specifically, and the incident detail information, the incident that information that we got from the dispatcher. On the map, it'll show you their destination and the different map markers around their destination. There is a gear in the upper right hand corner of the map where you can choose what filters you see, such as if you don't want to see fire hydrants, you can turn all the fire hydrants off. If you don't want to see certain type of map markers or something, you can turn those on and off. And those are personal preference things that you can utilize. In the bottom right, there's a couple different map view options, road map, satellite, hybrid terrain. There's a little, I call him the orange Google guy. If you click on the orange Google guy, he can be added to the map and you can get a street view to see what's happening at that location. Now it's not a live street view, of course, but if you are going to an area that you're not familiar with, you can actually stand on the road, pan left and right, zoom in and out, look up and down, and you can see the area where the first responders are headed to. You'll see there's a couple different agencies listed along the top. You can click on the X to remove that agency, or you can just click on the agency itself and toggle between up to five different agencies. If you click the red data button, it will take you back to the main dashboard, the data screen. The help button is going to give you information and instructions about the dispatch screen. You'll see there's two blue links here where you can download the auto login for Windows and Linux. There's a lot of other information as you scroll through there that may help you in use of this screen. Our contact information for our technical support is also listed there, so that's always available to you. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, which is completely free. This will allow you to get updates and alerts when we post new videos. To get immediate access to the I'm Responding Insider playlist, scan the QR code to the left-hand side. Thank you for watching and contact our support team with any questions you may have.